What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my pathology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about cell adaptations, cell injury, and cell death. We talked about atrophy, aplasia, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia, and neoplasia. Talked about apoptosis versus necrosis, hypoxia versus hypoxemia, benign tumors versus malignant tumors. And in the previous video, we discussed dystrophic calcification versus metastatic calcification. Today, we shall talk about those pesky laminated, lamellated layers of calcification known as samoma bodies. What causes them? Why should we care? Let's find out. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's delve deep into the land of disease. This is my pathology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention, not to be confused with my patient's urine retention. What is pathological calcification? It's the deposition of calcium in different tissues. Can we be more specific? Sure, it's the deposition of calcium salts in the tissues. But is it just calcium? Absolutely not. We also have smaller amounts of iron, magnesium, etc. How does this calcium deposition look like? White, chalky substance. In the previous video, in this pathology playlist, we have talked about necrosis. We have many different types of necrosis, including coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, caseous necrosis, fibrinoid necrosis, fat necrosis, and gangrenous necrosis. Almost any type of necrosis can cause pathological calcification. There is something that your parents should have taught you but didn't. This is the sequelae of necrosis. What happens after necrosis? Many things happen after necrosis. Let me tell you about the important three. Number one, phagocytosis of necrotic debris. After necrosis, after the cell goes to hell, there is a bunch of debris. The macrophage or other phagocytic cells are going to come and eat that debris. This is true if we started with a small area of necrosis or small number of cells that are finished. But what if, and that's a big if, we have a larger area of necrosis because many cells are gone by necrosis. In this case, we will certainly have an inflammatory response. And if that was not enough, you will have organization as well. Look, when a pathologist says the word organization, we do not mean getting neat and tidy. Organization in pathology has a specific meaning. It means fibrosis. And this is the second sequela of necrosis. But what if the necrotic tissue cannot be completely removed or cleared? What's going to happen? Well, if you cannot remove it and you cannot fibrose it, then at the very least, you can calcify it. And this is called dystrophic calcification. So, if we have a small number of cells dead, we have phagocytosis. If we have a larger number of cells uh, that died by necrosis, we'll have inflammation and fibrosis. But if we cannot perform phagocytosis or inflammation and fibrosis, if we cannot clear the necrotic debris, guess what's going to happen? Dystrophic calcification. And let me remind you that cancer or malignancy or malignant tumors are associated with what? They are associated with necrosis. So what happens after necrosis or degeneration? Let me remind you of myocardial infarction. Here is the heart. The cardiac muscles are dying. Myocardial infarction. This is death. This is not injury anymore. It's death. And when the cell is dead, the membrane of the cell is going to lose all of its integrity just like your typical politician. And therefore, any enzyme that was inside the cell is going to be released to the outside. LDH is going to be kicked out. How about Mr. Myoglobin? Kick it out, so it's going to increase in the blood. How about CKMB? Increases in the blood. How about something like troponin? Also increases in the blood because they are being kicked out of the cell because the cell has lost its membrane, which means all of the enzymes are going to leak outside. Here is a question for the pros. What subtypes of troponin are released after a myocardial infarction? Is it just any troponin or do we have specific subtypes of troponin being released after an MI? Let me know your answer in the comments. So what? I released a bunch of enzymes to the bloodstream or to the extracellular fluid. So what? Well, these enzymes can definitely alter the pH. I can think of that. And they can break down organic phosphate. I can imagine that. 
And remember that there should be a delicate balance between phosphate and calcium. If you disrupt one, you can disrupt the other, and this can lead to calcium deposition. Especially if the medium becomes more alkaline or basic, which means with high pH and low hydrogen ion concentration. Why is this? Because alkalosis favors calcium deposition. Look, there are two forms of calcium. There is calcium that is not ionized and not charged and bound to something. And there is another type of calcium which is ionized and charged and unbound to anything. What alkalosis does is that it takes some of that doozy ionized charged active calcium and deposits it into the tissue in this form that is bound to the tissue, not freely floating. So alkalosis favors calcium deposition, which means with alkalosis, you will have more calcium deposition, but you will have less ionized calcium in your blood. And whenever you have less ionized calcium in the blood, guess what's going to happen? Calcium is contra-excitability. Calcium is contra-excitability. Excitability of what? Of nerves. And what's going to happen if my nerve excitability increases? I will suffer from a condition known as... And I've talked about tetany in great detail in my endocrinology playlist. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Let's talk about pathological calcification. All right, we have two subtypes of pathological calcification, dystrophic calcification and metastatic calcification. What is dystrophic calcification? Dystrophic calcification is a local calcification caused by a local injury or a local problem. However, metastatic means global or systemic or diffuse or generalized or all over the body caused by a global problem, a global issue. That's the difference between dystrophic and metastatic. I mean, if something is systemic and all over the body, we're going to call it metastatic. In this case, metastatic does not necessarily mean cancer. It just means spread out all over the body because meta means change and static means location or site. Oh, I am being transferred into a different site, meaning all over the body. Some etymology action. Dystrophic, what does that even mean? Trophy means growth, not as in a trophy wife who's going to take all of your money. Metastatic means metastasis, change the site or the location, meaning widespread. Dystrophic calcification, we have a local cause leading to local calcification. But in metastatic calcification, we have a global or generalized or widespread or systemic cause leading to a systemic calcification. Calcification in many different disparate organs. If dystrophic calcification is local, then we expect that the serum calcium concentration is normal because this is not a systemic issue. But in metastatic calcification, it is a systemic issue. It's all over the body. So we expect that the serum calcium will be high and this is the cause of the global calcification. So you get calcified and you get calcified and you get calcified. In dystrophic calcification, we have a local cause. Give me examples. Could be necrosis or could be degeneration. The tissue is dead or the tissue is diseased or sick. This is dystrophic calcification. It's the demonic, And therefore, the calcium will be deposited in a diseased tissue, not in a healthy tissue. The calcification is local in dystrophic calcification, such as a calcified aortic valve, which can lead to aortic stenosis. To learn more about valvular heart diseases, see my cardiology playlist. But in metastatic calcification, we have a systemic issue, such as what? Such as hyperparathyroidism or hypervitaminosis D. When PTH is high, what's going to happen to serum calcium? Of course, it will go up. When vitamin D is high, what's going to happen to serum calcium? Of course, it's going to go up. The PTH will raise the serum calcium by means of resorption, absorption, and reabsorption. Vitamin D is going to raise the serum calcium mainly by absorption in the gut. The tissue was normal, but then we just kept throwing all kinds of calcium at these different tissues 
because we simply had too much calcium in the blood. And this excess of calcium simply had to go somewhere. To learn more about hyperparathyroidism and hypervitaminosis D, please refer to my endocrinology playlist. So in cases of necrosis, what kind of calcification do I get? The answer is dystrophic calcification. How do I get it? This is the mechanism as we have discussed before. So what kind of calcification happens because of necrosis? It is the dystrophic calcification because dystrophic calcification happens when the tissue is dead or when the tissue is diseased. Necrosis leads to dystrophic calcification, a local issue causing a local calcification. What else? Thrombosis, which can definitely cause necrosis. Atherosclerosis, which can lead to necrosis from ischemia. Crest syndrome, what does the C stand for? Calcinosis cutis and high anti-centromere antibodies. The R, Raynaud's phenomenon. The E, esophageal dysmotility, the S, sclerodactyly, and the T is telangiectasia. I've talked about Crest syndrome in detail in my rheumatology playlist. Next, the torch infections, which can be transmitted from the mother to the baby during pregnancy or during labor. What does the acronym TORCH stand for? Let me know in the comments. Next is samoma bodies, which will be the topic of the next video. But how about metastatic calcification? It could be hyperparathyroidism or hypervitaminosis D, which are going to raise the serum calcium. This calcium is going to deposit at normal tissues. So you get calcification and you get calcification and you get calcification. Why these specific organs? Because remember, I've told you before that alkalosis favors calcium deposition. Can we have some alkalosis in the kidney? Absolutely, because as the kidney is trying to push and excrete the hydrogen ions into the urine, it's making the peritubular capillaries, the blood, more basic. Next, as the gut is trying to generate acid for the lumen or the cavity, it is generating bicarb, the base, onto the outside. Next, the lungs. As the lungs get rid of carbon dioxide, which is an acid, they are retaining the base. And alkalosis will favor calcium deposition. What causes hyperparathyroidism? Dystrophic calcification versus metastatic calcification. A local cause leading to local calcification versus a global systemic cause leading to a systemic calcification. In dystrophic calcification, we have necrosis, so this is bad tissue, diseased or dead tissue. But in metastatic calcification, the tissues were normal before you calcified them. In dystrophic calcification, the systemic serum calcium is normal. But in metastatic calcification, the systemic or serum calcium is high. Samoma bodies. Let me ask you a question. Is this an example of dystrophic calcification or metastatic calcification? The answer is uh, dystrophic calcification. The tissue is either diseased or dead. What are the samoma bodies? Concentrically laminated or lamellated calcified spherules. Circle upon circle upon a circle upon a circle. Do not stare at this shape too much because it's not good for your vestibule. I'm talking about the vestibule in your inner ear. So what is the cause of the samoma body formation? Here is something that your professor will never tell you. Listen carefully. Any papillary structure in pathology can cause samoma body formation. Example, papillary thyroid carcinoma. Oh, it's a cancer in the thyroid and it's papillary. Can I get samoma bodies here? Absolutely. How about adenocarcinoma in the lungs with a papillary structure? Oh, it's papillary. Can I get samoma bodies here? Yes, indeed. In the ovaries, papillary serous cystadenocarcinoma or papillary serous cystadenoma. Are these papillary structures? Absolutely. Can I get an amen? I mean, can I get some more bodies? Yes, indeed. Papillary endometrial cancer in the endometrium of the uterus. Is this papillary? Sure. Can I get some more bodies? Sure. Papillary vulvar cancer can lead to some more bodies. Papillary renal cell carcinoma, some more bodies. Papillary bladder cancer, some more bodies. Papillary breast cancer, some more bodies. Papillary skin cancer, also some more bodies. Any papillary pathological structure can have samoma bodies. So on your exam question, when the professor asks which of the following is characterized by the presence of samoma bodies, just look for the word papillary and choose the answer and it will be the correct answer. But what if you did not find papillary there? Well, then you have to know something else, such as mesothelioma, which is a tumor in the mesothelium. What the flip is a mesothelium? Well, we call it meso because meso means mid, i.e. the layer in the middle, which is the mesoderm. That's why it's called mesothelium. It's kind of an epithelium of the mesoderm. 
Where do you find mesothelium in the human body? In the famous three Ps. What are the three Ps? The pleura, the pericardium, and the peritoneum. These three cavities can suffer from a tumor known as mesothelioma, which is nasty, really nasty. Say hi to asbestosis. Meningioma can also have some more bodies. This is a tumor in the meninges, which cover the brain and the spinal cord. Prolactinoma, a tumor in the pituitary cells that make prolactin. We call them the lactotrophs or the mammotrophs of the pituitary. To learn more about prolactinoma, see my endocrinology playlist. To learn about thyroid cancers and the different types of thyroid cancer, see my endocrinology playlist. To learn more about endometrial and vulvar cancers, see my obstetrics and gynecology playlist. To learn more about lung cancer, see my pulmonology playlist. To learn more about RCC, see my nephrology playlist. Bladder cancer, see my urology playlist. Breast cancer, see my OBGYN playlist. Skin cancer, see my dermatology playlist. I have more than 2,700 videos on this channel. Medicine is not something that I do. Medicine is who I am. Remember that cancers or malignancies are associated with necrosis. And if they are associated with necrosis, therefore they can lead to dystrophic calcification. This is what you call a samoma body. Dystrophic calcification versus metastatic calcification. Please take a moment to pause and review. Make sure to watch my video on necrosis and its different subtypes. See my pathology playlist. And to learn about my cardiac infarctions, strokes, cardiothoracic surgery, neurosurgery, vascular surgery, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, and more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about cardiac arrhythmias, ARDS, acute limb ischemia, the toxidromes, drowning, hypothermia, hyperthermia, and many other emergencies, download my emergency medicine high yield course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn more about ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, vulvar cancer and breast cancer, download my obstetrics and gynecology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.